Nigeria scores important victory in fraudulent $9 billion PNID case and the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors have threatened to begin another nationwide strike. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. Thank you for joining us on the program. Now, Nigeria has won a major step in the fight against the announcement of $9 billion, billion dollar judgment uh, for the PNID. For now, the court has ruled that that payment will be stalled. In August 2019, a British judge ordered the Nigerian government to pay $9 billion in assets to the firm. The PNID had reached a deal with the Nigerian government in 2010 to build a natural gas plant, but the deal fell through two years later. The firm then sued the government for failing to provide the gas or install the pipeline it had promised to build. The firm was first awarded $6.6 .6 billion in 2017, but the London court added $2.4 billion in interest. Joining us to take a look at this latest feat by the Nigerian government is Dakwo Akinyoshu, a legal practitioner, as well as Mande Ubani, a legal practitioner as well. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the program. We'll start with you, um, Mr. Ubani. Some have described the ruling as rare. Is it really? Well, uh, in, in the sense uh, that every person was expecting uh, the court in London uh, to actually uphold the arbitral award uh, of $10 billion uh, based upon the fact that Nigerian uh, government uh, legal representation wasn't too solid from the beginning. Uh, the mistake was made at the arbitration uh, proceeding where there was no quality representation and that award was actually made against us as a person. We suddenly woke up and then tried to lay all manner of accusation and allegation of fraud in the contract in the first place. And then we were asking that the court should give us extension of time uh, within which to do certain things that should have been done before now. So one was not expecting that we're going to actually achieve the feat of having this uh, judgment uh, I was stalled at this point in time, and then the court granted the application for extension of time, and also for to stall also the award of the of the amount of money that was awarded against us. So for now, that was not set aside. It's also important we point that out. The arbitral award has not been set aside. What has actually happened by the report that I have just read is that you are given an extension of time within which to set, take some measures like. Having some documents now uh, brought in in evidence because you have alleged fraud, and then the court now will actually investigate whether if the allegation of fraud was made timely and what steps you've taken to investigate that fraud all this while. So you are given that opportunity now to be here. That is actually what I understand uh, this particular judgment to me. Not that the judgment has been set aside, only that you are given an opportunity to now possibly uh, prove the allegation of fraud or whatever you have alleged against. The, the, the contract uh, ipso facto and against the arbitral award that was made against Nigeria as a country. What would you say uh, is the next step for Nigeria in this matter? I mean, like it or not, a lot of persons are saying this is a rare feat for the court to grant the prima facie uh, case. Yeah, I, I agree with you. The issue of uh, uh, fair hearing uh, is a very fundamental principle in law. Uh, and whenever you are denied that opportunity of being here, uh, it can it can actually uh, be very costly. Now, if the court gives you an opportunity to be here, based upon the fact that you say you have a solid evidence in order to defend your case, uh, it's clearly a rare opportunity. And of course, you'll be in a better position to place your material and evidence you have uh, before the court. So what has happened at this juncture is that Nigeria has been given the second chance, so just like second chance, you know, being given for us as a nation in order to tell 
our own side of the story. And the side of the story of Nigeria is that that contract is a ipso facto from beginning was fraudulent. That there was no contract in itself. That even the arbitra arbitration that took place was also fraudulent uh, because Nigeria was not given that opportunity of uh, presenting quality uh, representation. That everything was in such manner that it's an arranged, an arranged process and proceeding. And we have seen it happen several times. You know, for a contract that actually happened in Nigeria, and you are carrying the issue of arbitration to UK, uh, you are carrying arbitration, you know, to another country other than the country where. The your subject matter actually arose, yeah, we, we which actually again lost is something that, that we need one, to interrogate, even as lawyers. I don't know why we must begin to carry our matter, every matter that happens in our country, and the subject matter is actually situated here. Anytime there is arbitration, we take it to England, we take it to France. So we need to begin to interrogate all these issues in order to get... Why was this but, matter but, but, decided... But, but, but to be fair why on the um, AGF's office, they did make an attempt to bring the case to Nigeria, but they lost out on that one. And the important thing is that the process must continue if we are to make headway in trying not to pay that uh, fine. I agree with you. I, I start from the beginning, when the contract is actually, you know, consummated, when the contract is written... Most time, jurisdiction is assigned to outside the country where the subject matter is situated. I've seen it in many of the contracts and all that. And I think that lawyers in Nigeria must begin to interrogate situations like this. Why, why would we concede to having arbitration have, you know, take place outside jurisdiction where the subject matter is situated? You know, and most times, you don't get fair hearing. So in this particular case that arbitration took place, it took place in England. And in such manner, hush, hush manner that Nigeria was not given adequate time to represent uh, represent them themselves. And so this is what has actually happened in court, where the court now is being told that we need to be here, that we suspect foul play, that we suspect that there was fraud in the entire arrangement from beginning to the end. So that the court now says, oh, I agree with you. I'm giving you an extension of time. You now bring in those documents that you have. And let's look at those documents, whether there was actually allegation of uh, fraud and whether what steps you took we are right steps you know when you discover that there was allegation of fraud from 2015 so these are issues now that the court will uh, uh you know look into so it's like giving you a second chance to leave and nigeria has been given second chance to leave not having suffered the burden of paying 10 billion dollars 10 billion dollars and they have a right to seize our property over there in England, it would have been very disastrous if that right. judgment was actually allowed to be executed against us. Uh, let's see if we have a better connection with Mr. Akiyoshu. Um, I'll just start bringing you into the conversation by, you know, getting your thoughts on this ruling on the PNID matter. Yes, as, um, as Mr. Obani has said, this presents an opportunity for the the state of Nigeria to represent its case. As has been said several as well, there really wasn't a contract underlying it. And it seemed as if it was all shrouded in a huge fraud and controversy. But I think this case is one of the cases that, much as some people would not like to admit it, but is one thing that gives kudos to this administration's determination to ensure that it fights corruption. And you will find that in the investigations, there is a memo that was alluded to have been written by the vice president saying that this whole thing seems funny and they should investigate it. And that was the source of the, big, of the, the opening up of an investigation into it. Originally, we were even trying to negotiate it lower but then when the um, memo came and said, look, this thing should be investigated. I, I just shows that this administration is working towards that. But beyond all of that, um, Obani had said, my dear brother had said before, that why should contracts, why should um, arbitration be taken to the outside the country? I think that is one of the tenets on which arbitration is given kudos or people go to arbitration so that you get a sense of fairness and you are not going to the jurisdiction where you may not be able to win or argue your case freely. So that independence or the opportunity for the panel adjudicating on the matter to be fair, that gives the arbitration the 
result that people that makes people go to arbitration. All right. So on its own, it was not bad. Uh, stay with you still. Um, let's talk about some other issues arising. Um, on this um, matter. Uh, Nigeria now has court clearance to request documents from PNID and review bank statements of ex-president uh, Goodluck Jonathan. Um, we also have, they also have the clearance for the former petroleum minister, Desani Alison and Madweke, as well as uh, Lukman. Uh, to what extent do you think the Nigerian officials are culpable and will there be any unveiling, considering the fact that it seems there is an unwritten code, um, I don't know, you can confirm that, um, of any government not to prosecute past president um, in Nigeria. Are you expecting any surprises? Well, as you know, this is not a question of probing the past administration or the past president. It is more of fact-finding to see what exactly happened. But from the top of it, you can see, obviously, that PNID or the foreigners are more involved in corruption in Nigeria than, than Nigerians themselves. I mean, if you know the underlying basis for your contract never existed, why would you attempt to pay anybody for it? The, from the facts that I have seen, they were supposed to be getting wet gas of certain volumes from Adax and Mobile, which will be converted to dry gas and Nigerian government will buy from them to use in the power plant. But Adax and Mobile said to them from the get-go, we cannot supply you these quantities of gas, that, of wet gas that you seek, that is supposed to be wet gas we are not using that is being flared that you require but we don't have these volumes to deliver to you so from the get-go it was clear that the contract could not stand the people who signed the contract at that time may have been unaware because they were not the ones to supply the gas the gas should have been supplied by adax and mobile and if they had the dry gas then the government could use it was the understanding so that gap may still give the Nigerian officials at that time the, uh, the ability to say they did not know Adax and Mobile were not going to supply. And you really can't blame them for that. All right. But PNID that knew and was playing games should take full responsibility for that. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, some investigation and some responsibility has to be taken uh, by those who played a part um, in the situation that Nigeria finds itself with the PNID uh, scenario. W wouldn't you agree? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Right. definitely. I'll come back if to you. If someone dropped the ball, then they have to pay for it. In retrospect, uh, Mr. Albani, while Nigeria has always insisted that there was massive bribe, um, over the threshold of $300,000. PNID maintains that the country invented the bribery allegations to distract them uh, from their own mismanagement. Now that the court has established a prima facie case of bribery against PNID, should we be cautiously hopeful uh, of success thereafter? I am not... Uh... Uh, aware of the fact that the prima facie case of bribery has been established by the court. Uh, the court said they have not in any way established any bribery and corruption. What they have done uh, by the latest uh, ruling is that opportunity is now given to Nigeria as a country who has been alleging uh, uh, some fraudulent acts by parties to this particular contract to now come forward with whatever evidence they have. And you have said it, they will now look at the bank statement of some uh, chief actors uh, in that particular case at that time, and then present any evidence that actually incriminating evidence that will actually exculpate Nigeria. It's very important that Nigeria present that particular evidence before the court in order to show that Nigeria was uh, actually not liable uh, to those uh, damages that were awarded against uh, the arbitral award that was made and even all the consequential interest rate that has been imposed upon for Nigeria to pay. So Nigeria is struggling now to establish its innocence in the allegation that Nigeria breached the contract. That is actually what the matter was before the arbitration, that Nigeria actually breached the contract. Now, if Nigeria showed by evidence 
that there was no such breach, that the, the P&I, the company itself from beginning knew that this was clearly fraudulent. And they now utilize the opportunity in order to fleece Nigeria by this judgment. Then, the, so be it, Nigeria will be exculpated entirely uh, from this particular uh, scam and paying such huge amount of money as damages for a contract that never existed from the beginning. So I think the issue of uh, establishing prima facie case of right has not, I don't think from that, what I read, that that has been established. I think the opportunity is now given to Nigeria once again to prove all that allegation uh, of uh, corruption or fraudulent act on the part of PNID is very important, and that there was collusion also with some Nigerian officials. In well, my, I my mean, brother, this Kinoche first step the, the, has the, a proper understanding of the content of the contract and what happened from the narration he had just given. It's obvious uh, that he knows actually what transpired at that time with the contract. All right. Uh, l l let's, thank you for the clarification. And let's um, take on another aspect. There is a particular part um, of the statement during the ruling by the judge that I would like to uh, take, uh, uh, take you on, uh, Mr. Akin Oshu. Uh, let me quote a bit of that. Not only is the integrity of the arbitration system threatened, but that of the court as well, since to enforce an award in such circumstances would implicate it in the fraudulent scheme. Um, end of quote. Can you explain that for us? Because it leads me to the next question about the Nigerian court system. Ms. Akiyoshi. Yes, I, 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 the bit of the question. Okay, you missed it? Yes, you were... Okay, I, I was trying I to the get... There is, there is something the judge said um, during the ruling that I'd like you to um, maybe explain to a layman because it, it, I really wanted um, us to understand this ruling as much as possible. Um, he said during the ruling, I'm trying to quote him now, that not only is the integrity of the arbitration system threatened... Um, the UK court now, but that of the court as well, seems to enforce an award in such circumstances would implicate it in a fraudulent scheme. Um, I'm asking, what does this mean in your uh, understanding in layman's term? It, it simply means, to my understanding of what you have quoted now, because I don't have the whole context of it, Yeah, yeah understand. that the whole system of arbitration, the reason why people go to arbitration is because they expect justice and they expect it to be quickly done more than the normal court would give it. But if the arbitration panel is deceived or can be deceived into giving an award over what is clearly a fraudulent transaction, then it begins to call to question why people go to arbitration. And if leaving the arbitration the court is also um, hoodwinked into giving a judgment or, en or enforcing a judgment that is based on fraud. Then it will make the whole system questionable. But I, I do not think that that on its own would ordinarily make those systems not um, discredited. Because if there's a deliberate attempt to hide facts from a panel, it may be difficult for them to find it out. They are not magicians. They Maybe. only deal with facts that are presented to them. All right, let, let's go back to uh, Mr. Ubani. There are comments that, I, I alluded to this earlier, about the Nigerian court system, that if this case was filed in our courts, the outcome would probably have been different. Do you agree? You are placing yes. me in the position of God uh, to know what would have been the position. <laughs> no, there, there's a lot of, I mean, with recent Nigerian court courts. rulings that we've had, cases being thrown out on technicalities, uh, people that have been convicted based on evidence are now walking free because of technicalities. I mean, it's a skepticism that a lot of persons would say uh, seems valid with our reality, but on the merit of the case, do you think a similar scenario would have played out in Nigeria? Because you were advocating you this, uh, earlier that we should take our cases that have been decided in here. Nigerian courts and uh, you wake up and you feel very good that we still have a system that is in place that we can also have some level of confidence uh, about our judicial system 
I am not ignorant of the fact that there are also some cases after decision you begin to question sometimes also the level of integrity of our judicial system here. Uh, so, but I will not stay here now to make what you call all round condemnation of our entire judiciary because I've also seen some very sound judgment proceeding from the lower even up to the highest court at the Supreme Court of Nigeria. So I don't know what would have happened if this matter is handled here, but I also believe that there have been instances where we have gotten justice here in this country. And a sound lawyer will look at that judgment and feel very good that we still have uh, some institution in place. I mean, our judicial system that is also working. Uh, I am aware that there are sometimes some, some judges come up with technicalities that defeat the essence of justice and, and the substance of matters. Uh, but there are, few, there are a few of them. There are a few of them. Majority of decisions in Nigeria by our Nigerian courts are also interested in, in ensuring that justice is meted out to parties who approach the judiciary for, uh, for justice. Uh, so I wouldn't have known. Maybe it would have gone the other way. Maybe it has gone. The, but I'm also very impressed with the judicial system in England. It's a, bit, it's a bit more transparent. It's also a bit more, for that judgment, for that particular statement you just quoted, it's very profound. He said that our judicial system uh, or judicial will be threatened if we continue now to enforce a judgment that is actually based upon fraud, as Mr. King has actually pointed out. It means that the foundation itself, you know, was faulty. And because the allegation of Nigeria is that the entire contract was fraudulent, and they, they want it to be investigated. It's a very serious allegation. And so let right. that allegation be proved by Nigeria with, with evidence with documentary evidence or whatever they have, you know, and all that. That is what this man has done by saying, I don't want us to continue on the way that this arbitration has, you know, gone. Mr. Ubani, I, I would have to interject now. Investigation to be done. I'm sorry, I have to interject now. Um, I'm told we have uh, less than two minutes to wrap up. So I will give uh, Mr. Kiyoshu uh, the last take on this by asking... Uh, the government, particularly the office of the AGF, received a lot of bashing after the judgment in August. Is this latest judgment a step towards the vindication for the office of the AGF in your thinking? Well, yes, you see, like Mr. Albani said, the judgment was based on false information. The Nigerian judiciary has been bashed often, but in this kind of case, if they had proper information, I don't think any judge would have decided otherwise. Um, like the, there's a maxim they use in law that you can't place something on nothing. And if it is clear to everyone that there was nothing underlying the contract, then it would have been easy for any court to come to the conclusion that this was not transparent. Uh, and I, I, I have no doubt at all that the court right. would have done what is right. All right. Um, I, I think I should just give you maybe 20 seconds to wrap up as well, uh, Mr. Obani, on this. Well, kudos to the Office of the Attorney General for, for being persistent and then, you know, uh, believing in the cause that they were pursuing. Uh, but as I said, it's not yet Uhuru until we finally have that particular arbitral award set aside. What we have, as has happened now, is that we are given opportunity now to state our own side of the case, you know, and then prove evidence of fraud from beginning in the entire contract. So this opportunity we must not lose. Let's get it right and get this judgment set aside. You and I both and a lot of Nigerians hope we get this one right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, Mr. Monday Ubani, legal practitioner, as well as uh, Mr. Dakbo Akinoshu, legal practitioner. Thank you both for coming on the program. Thank, Thank you, you for much. having us. All right, we'll take a short break. And when we return, we'll be talking about the resident doctor's strike. Don't go away. <laughs>